it's me and um, today we're going to finish off the tour with some bones and feathers facts about the great greens and the scarlet macaws. So we're going to start this off with looking at some of the feathers from the macaws and what I have here is some wing and tail feathers from both the scarlet and the great green macaw. So here you can see that the tail feathers are much longer than that of the wing feathers so that's one very easy to way to identify what feather you're looking at. This goes to say for most bird species as well. To tell the difference of whether the feather came from the scarlet or the great green macaw, you can actually have a little bit of a cheat sheet and you can turn those feathers around. What we see here is that the tail feathers, well all feathers of scarlet macaws display this beautiful red colour in the back, whereas the great greens display this kind of awesome golden yellow colour. Here you can see with those tail feathers from both species that the tail feather of the scarlet macaw is a lot longer than that of the great green. This is interesting because the great greens are a much larger species than the scarlet, but their tail feathers are not as long. When we look at the difference between wing and tail feathers, what you can see here is the primary difference is that length. But one other thing to look for is the rachis. The rachis is this veiny structure, and this goes up the centre of a tail feather and off to the side in a wing. And that's because of those uses. So these feathers are developed for different things. Tail feathers are used as a braking system as they fan those out in the approach of a branch to help them slow down so that they can land gracefully in the trees. Wing feathers, this goes off to the side and this is one of many great adaptations for flight. This allows air distribution so that they can create lift in flight as they swoosh down through the air and then slice back up. Um, some other things is that these tail feathers of the scarlet macaws are believed to be one of the longest tail feathers of all macaw species. These can take over six months to grow in fully. This is really interesting because what you can see here is that what actually comes with that slow growth is stress marks. Just like humans, there's stressful periods of life and maybe there was a shortness of food in the wild or even maybe a stressful period as they have chicks in the nest and food becomes of high, higher demand. Um, but yeah, these are really, really interesting. Feathers come in very different shapes and sizes. You can see some different ones from the scarlet macaws here with all these different colours on them. But now we can look at the bones. So what I have here is the skull of a scarlet macaw. So it fits together a bit like a jigsaw and you can see now that it resembles what it should be. This is really interesting if you feel it, it weighs so little. And this is how such large birds average to weigh about one kilogram. Um, but this is because of the air pocketed system. They have a very well adapted bone structure to ensure that they don't sacrifice the strength, but they have the less weight um, to actually enable flight. So they have air pockets all inside of their bones. I don't know whether you can see this, but if you have a look inside of here, this shows that they have these air pockets inside of this. What goes with this bone structure is the bite force. Macaws have an incredibly strong bite force for such a small mouth. And this is because of the head structure. So most animals have a two-parted head. You have your cranium and your lower jaw. So if you try now at home to only move your lower jaw, you can't move your upper one. And this is because we only have one hinge here and one set of muscles powering the movement of your lower jaw. What goes with parrots though in these macaws and what helps enforce that bite force is this double movement. So they have the ability to move their upper and lower mandible here. So they have a three-parted head. Their cranium, lower mandible and their upper mandible. So they have an upper mandibular hinge. So this is how they create a clamping force which helps them get into all those hard fruits and nuts there in the wild. This is very important for them because for the great green macaws, as we addressed earlier in the talk, that most essential food source is this mountain almond nut. And this is incredibly hard. You can compare it to a rock. Um, I can't get into this and I even tried with some pliers and a hammer to enforce it and it broke the concrete floor before it broke the nut. So these are incredibly very hard structures. So they break into these using that lower mandible here, they enforce that into the crease of the nut and they pressure it down with that upper mandible to get into those. One last thing that's really interesting about this bone structure is that it links to their digestive system. This upper mandible has a ridge inside which helps grind down that food. Their food is then stored in what we call a crop. This is a food storage pouch between their mouths and their stomachs. And this is, in very, this is a very important part because they have very high metabolism. It's important that they have a system that enables them to get enough energy from everything that they eat. So they grind this down, store it there, then the gizzard grinds it up even more, and then this delivers the food to their stomachs. If they were to 
digest everything all at once like we do, they'd have to forage all day long. So this is why they have this system which allows an, a slow but steady delivery food system to their stomachs throughout the day. These birds can fly over 20 kilometers in one flight of session, which is why they need to be able to replenish their energy throughout flight. To give you an idea of how fast their metabolism really is, so the average scarlet macaw weighs around a kilogram. They will consume around 270 calories per day. This doesn't seem like much, but if me, I personally was to eat 270 calories per kilogram that I weighed, I personally would be eating over 18,000 calories a day, which is incredible. So that goes to show how much they are really eating in respect to their size. So the last thing now that I have for you to guys to see is this egg here. This is the egg from a scarlet macaw and you can see that it's pretty tiny. It's in my hand here and it just sits in the palm of my hand. So you can understand how tiny these chicks are when they first hatch and why they are so vulnerable. But yeah, that's it from me today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do comment with any questions that you've got and we'll try and answer them in response. So yeah, thank you very much and we'll, we'll see you next time.